Hello? It's time for church. I'll meet you there. is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting and watching, watching for you. Today's scripture is from Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John's United Methodist Church on this beautiful Saturday in Tucson, Arizona. It's our joy to come into your presence through this video. It is our prayer that we will be able to lift and bless your hearts as a result of sharing God's truth with you here this morning. I want to look at the 11th verse of the scripture that has been presented to us where Jesus says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? It is of interest to note that in Luke's account of this, he makes a little bit of adjustment. He says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? As we look at these verses, and at this 11th verse this morning, I believe that Jesus is laying down for us the conduct for spirit-filled believers to use as they approach God in prayer. We all should be looking for ways to improve our prayer life. We should look, be looking for ways to make our prayer life more effective and more dynamic. I have found something here that is helping me. I believe it can be of service to others as well. 
The first thing that this verse calls to my attention, and it may not be so evident, but it's still there, and that is that Jesus is assuming that we come to God in prayer with the idea that God is in complete control of everything that affects our lives. Not only is he everywhere present, but everywhere he is present, he is, has perfect control of all the circumstances. Now, this is hard for us sometimes to accept, but nonetheless, it's the premise from which I believe we must operate as we bring ourselves to pray to God. If this is true, then the disciple of Christ must maintain an attitude of perfect trust in the God whom he believes is in control of all of his circumstances. And this especially comes into play when occasionally in our lives things kind of get out of control. There are things, times when things just go any way but what we want them to go. But in those moments, we still must assume that God is present in the midst of our chaos, and he's still in control. Our responsibility is to remain confident in his presence and trust him against all of the odds that seem to take that trust away. Now, the second thing that I see in this verse is that Jesus is speaking to us of a certain level of depravity that exists in all of our hearts. He says, and I quote, if you then being evil, we is acknowledging that we have sinful issues in our lives and that need to be dealt with by God's grace. But he is also saying, that as bad as our fallen nature may be, there is something about a father element within even the most evil person that has not been completely extinguished. Jesus' point is that if it is possible for a child to plead to his fallen, sinful, earthly father and have the assurance that he will not be denied, then how much more should we look to the good God of heaven and pre who is prepared to give good things to his children who cry out to him day and night? There's a third element in this verse that I think needs also to be underscored. If we truly believe that God is aware of our needs and his, that his goodness is never to withhold any good from us, we should not be exercised in our prayers as though we had to wring something out of God's hands. It's a natural thing for a son to ask something of theirs, his father, knowing that the father has a desire to do good to them and that the father will be delighted in pleasing his son by giving him what he asked for so that there's no need to plead or to use other quote-unquote power techniques to get our Heavenly Father to concede to do some good for us. Now, when we put this into context, folks, you see, this takes all the worry out of prayer. We know that God is our Father. We know further that He loves us and that there's nothing good that I need that He will not give to me. Now, let me put this into a context when it appears that God is not listening to us when we pray. Because there will come times when darkness overwhelms our lives and God does not lift the darkness. Here is where you find out whether or not you truly trust him. There are times when God does not appear to be our friend, but he's still there with us, and we have to remind ourselves of that truth. There will be other times 
when God appears as an unkind father who deliberately refuses to give us what we want. The truth is, he's still interested in giving us what is good for us and will do so. And then there are times when God almost appears to be the unjust judge who allows injustice to come into our lives, but we cannot let this root have any root in our thoughts because God is not unjust. All of this brings us back to our first point. We must commit ourselves to believe that God is in control of all of our circumstances. Nothing positive and nothing negative can happen to us except that his will is permitting it. Keep in mind that faith grows fastest and best in darkness where there is uncertainty and conflict. God knows that he must allow some negative issues to happen in our lives in order to build the character he desires in us. Prayer is ever much more than asking. It is much more than presenting a shopping list to God. It comes from our having an utter confidence that we have in his goodness and that he desires to give us his best. This attitude of our hearts and mind produces what I like to think of as the atmosphere in which asking God for the things we need is a perfectly natural thing to do. This atmosphere prevails in the words of verse 7. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. Our prayers, therefore, should be as simple as that because we have confidence that our Heavenly Father is in complete control of our lives and that he wants his very best for us. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for giving us the privilege of coming to you, into your presence through prayer. We're grateful for your many blessings and your love. We lift those who struggle with health issues this morning we hear, ask you to hear the prayers of your children as they cry out to you for their health issues. We pray, God, that you would grant wisdom and guidance to the leaders of our nation. Give them wisdom to lead us out of this pandemic in which we find ourselves. Give us all courage to live lives in a more normal way. Above all, O oh, Father, we pray that your truth and your justice will prevail over our nation and over our individual lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.